You're looking so good this morning. You know, for, for some of you, it's the first encouraging word that you received this whole week. <laughs> Amen. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. You know, I want you just to, you know, uh, uh, I want you just to be with me uh, as we look at this. It's about church life. It's about family life. And, you know, and sometimes each one of us, we need, we need reminders like, for some of these important things that, you know, sometimes we just want to uh, hear different kind of things. Like. But, you know, these are things that, you know, we need to check our foundations. Like. Amen. And the Bible says in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, like, Jesus said this, a new commandment I give to you, uh, that you love one another as I have loved you. Like. That you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have Love for one another. You know, as you look at this portion of scripture, of course, you know, uh, our theme for this year is, okay, let me do this again. Our theme for this year is loving God, loving people. And you know, that's what we live for. You know, if you get the most important thing right in life, everything in life gets right, falls into place. But let me tell you this, if you miss out on the most important thing, which is the great commandment, that we may love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and we need to love our neighbors ourselves. Like. And if we get that wrong, come on, you know, our life is not going to be, you know, it's going to be a struggle right through life. life like. We need, come on, look at me. We need to do what's, what's most important. Like. Don't get involved in things that don't matter. Like. And sometimes we are so driven by the urgent that we forget what's important. Like. And the important thing is to love God with all our heart, our soul, our minds, and our strength. Like. And you know, in each one of us, we need to have this loving God, loving people as part of our life. Why? Because when you get this right, everything else in life uh, falls in place. La. Come on, church. We are most happy when we are loving God most. La. Amen. We are, you know, we pray best when we love God most. La. We obey best when we love God most. La. We serve best when we love God most. La. But here, Jesus, you know, Jesus says here, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. La. You know, as you look at scripture, you know, where there are repetition of words, few things you need to take note. La. There's an emphasis of truth. And there's also an urgency of the message. Like. Okay, as you look at, you know, John, John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35. Like. What are the words that are repeated? Like? Can we get just get that scripture up again? John 13 verses 34 and 35. Like. The Bible says, okay, what are the words that are repeated here? Like? Okay, love. For, I think about four times love. And what else? Like? Another word, more than love. Okay, you... You, uh, you, one another, all this, right? And so it's repeated. And so as I said, right, if there are repetition of words uh, in Scripture, uh, there is an urgency of the message. There's also an emphasis of truth. Uh. And so as you look at this, come on, it's so simple for us to know that Jesus said that, that you should love one another. Uh. You know, Jesus said that as I have loved you. Uh. And so he has already set a pattern for us to love one another as he has loved us, uh. And, the, and then he goes on to say, by this all men will know that we are disciples of Jesus when, we, when they see our love for one another. Come on church, as you look, you know, over this, you know, over this week or even these last few weeks, you know, just journeying people that are going through, you know, struggles in life, you know, marriage, uh, you know, marriages that are, you know, struggling. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, and, and as you look at, you know, over these years, you know, we see, right, you know, this whole area of, you know, loving one another. You know, why? Because, you know, our church life is important la, and our family life is important. La, and we need to understand that. La. Why? Because if you and I, right, you know, this is a, just a simple commandment. If you and I, you know, Jesus said, you know, the world will know that we are disciples of Jesus if we have love for one another. La. And the question is not, you know, the Bible speaks about love for one another. La. And then, right, we will be a testimony uh, uh, of Jesus to the, uh, to the world. La. You know, right through scripture, as you look at the book of Acts, you see this whole principle there as well. You know, yes, you know, we see, you know, the Pentecostal experience, you know, what a revival fire, the sounds of a rushing of a mighty wind, uh, tongues of fire that came them upon them. And then in chapter 2, Acts 2 verse 4, the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. But prior to that, what do we see in Acts chapter 1 verse 14? The Bible says, right, they were all Praying together in one accord. Come on, say this with me. Praying together in one accord. They were together. You know, they were together. They were praying together. And somehow, right, because of, you know, the influence of social media, uh, the culture that's, you know, permeate, uh, that the culture over, you know, the world. You know, we have, you know, come, you know, we have moved, we have shifted from just, uh, you know, the, the importance of together to individualistic. 
we become very individual. Pastor, I will do what I feel like doing. Come on, it's not about what you feel like doing. What does God want you to do? You know, what does God, you know, what is God speaking over your situation? You know, and this whole area of together. Church, you know, I want to really challenge each one of us. You know, as presidents were sharing, you know, how, you know, uh, they built their life in church life. Lah. And that's how Shantri and I built our life. You know, when we got married in 1983, we decided, you know, for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Lah. And, you know, and we made it a decision that the children grew up in church. Lah. The children served in church. Lah. You know, some of you may say, Pastor, now, you're easy, now it's so easy to serve. No, right there from the beginning when we got married, the kids, you know, even when Rema and Renita at that time, they were the first two firstborns. Lah. And, you know, we, you know, we used to take them and we used to do visitation even when I was working as an engineer. Like, you know, outright, night start, we take them visitation, we do visitation, we ran cell groups. Amen. Why? Because this is our lifestyle. Like. And church, listen, I didn't want my children to say, my, my, I didn't want my children, we didn't want our children to serve because I'm a pastor. Like. You know, they need to serve because they need to serve. Like. You know, because this is the greatest thing. You know, the greatest, you know, one of the greatest things is church life. Lah. And I want to share this. I want to challenge each one of us. Lah. You know, we, you know we, church life is so important. Lah. They say, right, kids that grow up uh, without church, you know, are very likely to backslide because of the influences of, their, uh, of the world. Lah. And now there's even a greater danger in the world that we live in lah, if our kids don't grow up in church. Lah. And so uh, this morning, uh, as you look at you know, the book of Acts, man, it was about church life. It was how you know, people love one another. It was how the power of being together. Uh, the Bible says they prayed together, Acts chapter 1, verse 14. And as a result of that, the Bible says you know, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says they were in one accord. Uh, they were together. Uh, they were praying together. They were you know, in unity. They were loving one another. Uh, and as a result of that church, what happened was revival. Fire came upon you know, the whole church. Lah. And that was the beginning. That was the beginning of something wonderful, powerful. Lah. And if you look at the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 40 to 47, lah, you know, the Bible says, look at the words that are used. They were praying together. Lah. They were continuing. They were in one accord. They were fellowshipping. Lah. They were, you know, fellowshipping, breaking bread from house to house. Lah. And this was how the culture was. Lah. They were together. Lah. And you and I, come on church, you and I are trying to do Christianity, Christianity on our own. It don't work. Lah. Why? Because your success, our success is interdependent. That means I cannot fulfill my destiny in life without you. And you cannot fulfill your destiny in life without me. We are in this together. We are stronger together. We are better together. We need each other. And there's no other thing. You know, as you look at scripture, you know, go back, look at Ephesians. You know, how right, you know, God has structured each one of us, how we need to, each one of us needs to play a part in the body of Christ. You know, serve one another, do whatever we can. Why? Because, you know, this is how God has structured us. Now. You know, you cannot grow, you know, you cannot grow independently. Now. That's not how God has structured. Now. You have to grow, right? You know, part of our growth process as a Christian now, is interdependence because we need each other. Now. You know, some of, you know, we need each other. Every part of the body is important. Now. And you see this in the book of Acts. Now. You see them, right, you know, breaking bread from house to house. You see them praying together. You see them, you know, the Bible says, uh, fellowship, quinonia. Amen. They were sharing. They were sharing every part of them. They were praising God together. And, and then, right, you know, as you and I do what God wants us to do, God will do what He, can, he has to do. You see, right, our whole Christian life is a partnership. You know, there are things that God wants us to do and there are things that God will do. And you know, don't expect God, if you and I don't fulfill the conditions of doing what we're supposed to do, and you and I sit down and complain, right, God, why am I not, why am I not, why am, why am I not seeing this? You know, why, you know, why are my children like this? Yeah, you know, a lot of times, you know, once, you know, some years ago, many years ago, I called this a person up and, you know, and I asked her, you know, how come you all are not in church? Are you pastor? Got, uh, my children got tuition. Tuition on Sunday. You know, come on, you know, you, now, right, when they are, in their, in their primary school. Uh, it's easy to discipline that, but one, once they go as a teenager, you're going to have major problems. Like. You see, friends, you know, you and I take so lightly, you know, the things that God has spoken in Scripture. Like. And as a result of that, you know, we pay the consequences of our lack of, you know, our lack of commitment, our lack, you know, wanting to do what God wants us to do. Like. Church, we need to rise up. Like. Come on, we need to rise. Uh, there is an onslaught. Come on, let me tell you this. There's an onslaught on marriages. Uh, 
you know, there is an onslaught, some crazy things, you know, not just, you know, people getting, you know, divorced, you know, shh, in, in, say, maybe one year, two years, but sometimes, you know, people, you know, married for 30 years and it seems like a fantastic marriage and yet, right, divorce takes place. Right? And the sad thing is, they're Christians. Right? How can this be? How can this be, right? Like two Christians can divorce. Right? You know, when you and I, right, stood before, you know, when we took our marriage vows, vows right? I take you, Shantri, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to that first do part. Right? And then we forget about that. Right? And then, right, you and I try to do our own stuff, right, and we forget about, you know, what God has positioned. Right? Come on, let me tell you this, you know, we are here to help anyone, right? Amen. You say, right, your marriage is broken before. You know, we are here to help you. Uh, there is life. Some of us, some of you, you know, it was not your fault. Uh, amen. There is life after this. We are here to help everybody. Uh, but here, I want to tell you the principles here today. Uh, the principles for church life, the principles for family life. Oh, he who has ears, let him hear what God wants to say to us this morning. Uh, amen. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 14, uh, what does the Bible say? Uh, the Bible says in Colossians 3, tap, tap, chapter 3, verse 14, uh, above all things, la. what are we supposed to put on? La? Love. La. Come on, say this. La. Above all things, la. above all things, put on love. La. Above all things, put on love. La. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. La. Come on, above all things, you got to put on love. La. Come on, you and I are, you know, are massacred by a lot of all things. La. We are massacred by our own struggles within. La. We are just, right, you know, you know, tormented by the problems that we face. Of course, some of us, right, in a small problem, we exaggerate and make it a bigger problem. La. Uh, you know, some of us, right, you know, imagine our imagination can make something that is small, big. La. But that's our struggle. You know, we are battled with sicknesses. We are battled uh, with, you know, people's perception of us. We are battled with people's expectation of us. La. And, you know, and what do we do la? amidst all this? La. Above all things, we are struggling with our own, you know, thought life. We are struggling with our own habits. La. You know, as you look at our own personal lives, we feel as though, you know, we have, you know, we feel as though we have failed God. We want to pray more. We want to read more. La. Of the scriptures. La. And so we struggle. La. And, but the Bible says, above all things, Colossians 3.14. Put on love. La. Come on, say this with me. La. Put on love. La. Amen. Put on love. Above all things. La. Whatever you're going through this morning. La. Come on, church. You know, this is the environment for guaranteed blessing. La. And as we will see later on in the scriptures as we're going through, this is the environment. Just put on love. Put on love. Live, love. Amen. Why? Because the greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, minds, and our strength and to love our neighbors ourselves. So put on love. Make this our habit to put on love. Each one of us. In any situation that you go through, put on love. Amen. You see, right, as you look at love, you know, church, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, I'm so sorry, you've got to hear this over and 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 over again. La. Why? Because if you've got a problem, what, what scripture do you use? La? If you've got a struggle in life, what scripture, you know, what, what is your first uh, reset, your spiritual reset, where do you move, go to? La? If you're struggling with a character weakness, la, all of us have got character weakness, all of us have got character issues, la. You know, all of us are characters. <laughs> you know, and what do we do? La? Amen. Come on. John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5. La. And you guys, are. you need to keep this in your mind. You need to keep this in your heart. And we want to declare this this morning. What does it say in John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5? La? Abide in me and I in you. La. As the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide with me. Hey, come on, let's read this together. La. Tell me you... Uh, let's read this together. Okay, let's do this. La. Are you ready? La? Abide in me and I in you. La. As the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. La. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit without which you can do nothing. La. Come on church, if you and I want to put on love, love, this is the key. La. Because everything about love revolves around Jesus. It is He who died on the cross for us. It is He who shed His precious blood for us. La. The Bible says He made peace on the cross through His precious blood. It is He who set the example for each one of us. La. And you and I cannot say, Pastor, I cannot love. La. You cannot love. 
Come on, you have, God has loved you. Le. Pastor, I cannot forgive. Le. You know, once in I was, I, I was ministering many, many years ago. Le. I was ministering to two committed, very, very committed Christians le, who had a big argument. And, you know, and they were shouting out. Le. They were shouting, uh, and you know, we will not tolerate that kind of uh, verbal uh, shouting. Le. And then, right, you know, I, I pulled them in and I said to them, listen, you know, can't, this can't happen. Le. And they said, yes, Pastor, I'm sorry, we have done wrong and all. Le. And then right, one of them said, you know, Pastor, I forgive. Le. I said, oh, praise God. Le. But I will not talk to the person anymore. Le. I thought, what kind of forgiveness? Le. All kind of forgiveness. La. Amen. You see, friends, this morning, you've got to put on love. La. And you know, if you and I want to say, right, we want to release forgiveness. Come on, where do we learn forgiveness? La? We learn to forgive because He has forgiven us. La. And if you and I cannot forgive, la, it just shows, right, that we have not really experienced the forgiveness of Jesus. La. You know, once I was ministering at an altar, you know, at a, a meeting, la, you know, I was ministering the altar. The people, you know, as I made the altar call, people came out. Nah. So I was at this corner. I was praying for, uh, I was praying for this person. Nah. And then this lady said, "You know, Pastor, my husband is giving me problems." Nah. So I said, "Okay, let's pray for a, a miracle breakthrough. Let's pray that God will come through." You know, we prayed. Nah. And then as I prayed for people, I went down to the other corner. Nah. And then right, there's this guy who said, "Pastor," nah. no, he said, "Pastor, I'm giving my wife a lot of problems." Nah. So now you and I know, you don't need a word of knowledge to know it's husband and wife. Love. <laughs> so I didn't want, you know, one of the things, were, you know, being a pastor is you've got to make sure you check the facts. Love. Because I've made some serious mistakes. Love. I remember once in JB Church, right, greeting people. Love. You know, as people came out to God, I said, hey, so when's, uh, uh, when's the baby coming? Love? She said, pastor, the, I delivered my baby two months ago. <laughs> Apologize profusely, love. And so sometimes as pastors, we need to make sure that we check the facts, right? So I said, uh, is your wife standing at the other side of the altar? La? She said, he said, yes, pastor. La. So everybody went and got them both together. La. You know what I did? La. Why? Because as you will see later on, right? The truth, the truth of the word of God. This is our absolute standard uh, to express the reality or uh, measure the reality of Christ. Absolute standard in which we solve problems. Absolute standard in which we live our Christian life. La. And so, right, I got them both together and asked them to forgive what each other. La. And so they looked at each other. La. And so I forgive you for all the hurts. I forgive you for all the things, for the words spoken. La. And then she started tearing and then you know, really emotional up there. And then, right, you know, she looks at, you know, and then she says, I forgive you, I forgive you. And then they both held hands together. And then I got them to say, rededicate your marriage vows. Wow. And they lived happily. No, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was at our Kotobaru church. They were visitors to our Kotobaru church. La. You see, friends, you know, you got, you got to put on love. La. And that love comes as, you, as a result of just abiding. La. Why? Because as we abide with Jesus, la, Come on, you and I will be so filled uh, with the love of Jesus. We will handle people with the love of Jesus. And this is our priority, put on love. Lah. That's why Jesus said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Lah. You know, one of the things I do every day, lah. you know what I do every day? Uh, on my notepad, I say this, Lord Jesus, I want to talk to you all the time. Lah. I want to listen to you all the time. Lah. I, want you to, I want to speak in tongues all the time. Lah. Lord, I want to yield to you all the time. Lah. I want to think of you all the time. Lah. I want to trust you all the time. Lah. I want to yield to you all the time. Lah. I want to obey you all the time. I want to do whatever you want me, want me to do all the time. Lah. And so sometimes, right, you know, our, my, as, you, as you take your handphone out, lah, automatically you want to see the WhatsApp. Lah. And then I've got to discipline the thumb lah, to move to the sermon notes. Lah. And then look at this. Lah. Why? Because, come on, technology is for us to abide with Jesus and to, and to see Him uh, come through in our life. La. So you've got to put on love. La. Come on, you've got to for all things. La. You, you know, people sit down and complain about things. Come on, put on love. Amen. You know, it's so easy to complain, right? You know, a few weeks ago, a no, few, about two, three months ago, la, as we finished service, I went down. And then as I went down, you know, there was a lot of people that were there. All of you were eating, you know, I don't know whether today we're going to have some delicious curry puffs or not. No. I'm a bit down now. Like. <laughs> and so, you know, everybody was there talking. And this little, this, this, this child from the children's church came up and said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I thought, whoa. whoa. <laughs> and so this child came up and you know what he said to me? He said, Pastor, you are doing a good job. 
Oh. I, I've never, in my whole ministry, I've never heard this before. Like, you know, Pastor, you're doing a good job. Like. Very good, Pastor. You're doing a good job. Like. I thought, wow, you know, amazing, right? You know, and let me tell you, all of us need some. Hello. All of us need encouragement. Like. And so, come on, church, you've got to put on love. Like. You've got to put on love. And this is something that you, you know, carry this. Like. Another uh, interesting story. Like. I've got this person's permission, by the way, like. You know, the other day I did, uh, we did the Bible interpretation seminar. Hmm? And then after that, you know, it was about four o'clock, my wife and I said, we will go and uh, we will do a tea, like, you know, do some tea. Uh, and then, right, we chat. And so we went to one of our restaurants that we normally visit. Uh, we sat down there and opposite on the, on the other side was, you know, a, a gentleman that, you know, was there with his grandchild. And so we just smiled and he smiled at us. And of course, like all good Christians, like, before we eat, Pray, right? And nowadays, now when we pray, God, you know, Lord, we just want to thank you for this food. Thank you for blessing us, bless this time. And Lord, we also pray for the salvation of all these people in the shop, like, in Jesus' name. Like. And then close our eyes. And then, right, and I looked up, and we were eat, going to eat, and then he looked at me. Like. And then, you know, and then he smiled, and then I, I looked at him, smiled. You see, come on, church. You know, if you can smile, right, you will win. Uh, you know, one pastor said to me, one, one pastor of a mega church, I heard this, like, he said, if we can get every Christian to smile, we can win the world for Jesus. You know, it's so hard. You know, so hard for people to smile. Uh. And so, right, you know, we just smile, connected. And then, and then he looked at me and said, are you a pastor? Uh. So I looked at him and, I, you know, we were sitting across and I said to him, uh, uh, you probably know I'm a Christian because I gave thanks for the food. Uh. And then he said, how do you know I'm a pastor? Uh. He said, you look like a pastor. Uh. I don't know what, like, what a pastor looks like. Look. Maybe a pastor. Dennis Barton looks like a pastor. Look. Okay. And so, and then I saw, so he said, you look like a pastor. I said, okay. And then we started talking. And, you know, and, and, you know as, as a result of this conversation, then we talked, and then we talked, and then he, we had mutual friends. Look. He immediately called his friend in Australia. And I haven't seen this. I haven't talked to this friend for more than, huh? more than, more than I think the 1990s, look. You know, they were here and then they had migrated. And so in the night, and then he put the phone and we talked. Look. And then we become good friends. Look. And ladies and gentlemen, put your hands. Welcome Felix. Look. Felix. <laughs> okay, Felix is the one that we met at the restaurant. Look. Amen. Amen. And you see friends, you know, put on love. Look. Put on love. Be friendly wherever you go. Look. You see friends, one of the things that you and I need to understand. Look. Amen. Is we, you know... You know, part of our Christian life is that God wants us to meet together la, in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. What does the Bible say? La? Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. La. The Bible says this, let us consider how one another in order to stir up to love and good works. La. And then the scripture goes on to say, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. La. And then, you know, encouraging one another, exhorting one another till we see the day appearing. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. The Bible says, you know, how we need to meet to stir one another. And the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Come on, church. You know, part of our Christian life is that we need to meet. Each one of us. Why? Because there's power together. You know, I don't know about you, but a lot of times in our own personal lives, I've seen major breakthroughs or God gives me a specific word during church time. Like, which I don't receive, right? You know, sometimes, you know, in a, you know, I can pray in tongues and, you know, wait. You know, sometimes, right, you know, you know, it doesn't come. But in church, right? Why in church, right? You know, sometimes, right, during the worship, you know, God gives me a specific word that encourages me, like, you see, friends, this morning, you know, why? Because the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. For, for where two or three are gathered in our, my midst, I am there in their midst. When two or three are gathered together, I am there in their midst. You see, friends, you know, when you and I gather together, you and I, right, you know, this morning we came to church, right, some, maybe, right, you had a tough time, but you came to church. By reason you come to church, the, you know, God begins to move on our behalf, and we experience the manifest presence of God. The verse before that in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, the Bible says, where two or three agree, it shall be done. That's why, friends, you know, wherever I've been like, over these years as a Christian, you know, I've always been part of the prayer meeting. 
you know, wherever, you know, whoever leads, you know, wherever, whichever church, you know, why? Because where two or three agree, it shall be done. And so I can be there and agree. And sometimes, you know, presenting my needs before the Lord and it shall be done. Why? Because together, you know, praying together releases answered prayer. Meeting together, when you and I meet together, what happens? We release, right, the manifest presence of God. Do you want to experience the manifest presence of God? Come on, these are guaranteed blessings. Hello? Guaranteed blessings. How many of us want guaranteed blessings? Every hand went up, every leg went up. Amen. You know, guaranteed blessings comes when the Bible says, right, where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. Presence of God. Come on, church. Revival, revival fire always takes place together. People praying fervently in unity. Simple. You know, no, D.L. Moody said this, another guy, oh, there's, if there's no unity, there's no love, there's no prayer, nothing is going to take place. And each one of us must understand. Jesus, before he went to Calvary, before he went to Gethsemane, what did Jesus say in John chapter 17? We will read a few scriptures in John chapter 17. In John chapter 17, you know, if you look at verses 11 to verse 21, there were four things Jesus repeated. As I said, when Jesus repeats or when the scripture repeats, you know, it's an urgency of the message. It is also, uh, each one of us, we need to take note. Why? Because there is a revelation of truth. Uh, Jesus said this four times. How many times did Jesus say this? Four times. If, if you as a parent told your child, right, do this. They don't do it. If you, your parents say, do this. They don't do it. They do this. Third time, you're... Hmm. Okay. And Jesus said this four times. You know what Jesus said four times? Jesus said this, that they may be one as we are one. He was praying to the Father. You know, he was praying to the Father and he said that they may be one. Come on, he was going to Gethsemane. He was, he was going to Gethsemane to pray. He was going to the cross to die on the cross for us. What did Jesus pray? You know, this is the prayer. You know, he wanted his people to be oneness. Not sameness. Oneness, oneness, you know, oneness in worship of Jesus, oneness in single mindedness to follow the purposes of Jesus, oneness. There's no such thing as, you know, everybody uniform. There's no such thing as sameness of everybody looks the same. No, you know, all of us are different. We have our different personalities, but our oneness, our unity comes as we worship Jesus together. Our oneness and unity comes as we do the purposes of Jesus together. Church, amen. In verses in John chapter 17, verse 21, what does Jesus say? What does the scripture say? John, John chapter 17, verse 21. Let's read this together. That they may be two, three, four, half. <laughs> that they may be one. Come on, look at the person next to you. That we may be one. That we may be one. That we may be one. That they may, and then what is it? As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. That the, wow, that the world may believe that you sent me. That means right in our oneness. Come on, our oneness, our loving each other, our you know dwelling together with each other. You know, it is a revelation to the world out there that Jesus, the reality of Jesus. Come on, church, your oneness, your un our unity la, is a revelation of the reality of Jesus. Uh, and that's why, you know, this is serious stuff. La. Come on, slap the person next to you and say serious stuff. We've got to fix this. La. And no person next to you, make sure you bring one next week. La. Okay, uh, okay, serious stuff. La. And then in verse 22, what does it say in John chapter 17, verse 22? La. Let's read this. La. Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? One of Jesus' wonderful prayers. La. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. That they may be one just as we are one. La. You see, friends, la. you know, the Bible says, right, you know, Jesus' prayer before Gethsemane. La. This was his prayer of, you know, unity in church. La. This was his prayer of oneness in the body of Christ. La. Some of these principles is not just for your church life, but also for your family life. La. And the Bible says this, right, that they may be one as we are one. La. And so when you and I are in unity, when you and I are in oneness, you know what does it show? It shows, you know, that it is a reflection of the Trinity. La. 
Because the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Na. And because of that, that's why our foundation for our unity is the Trinity. La. Our foundation for unity, the way that we love one another, is what Jesus did at the cross. He made peace through the, uh, His blood on the cross. La. And so, when you and I, so we need to take this seriously. La. Amen. That means, right, the way we do relationships. We've got to put on love, love. You know, we've got to put on love in everything that we do. We've got to put on love. We've got to put on love. Why? Because love is a decision. Love is a decision to seek the well-being of someone, uh, of someone else. You know, it's a decision. That means, right, you know, when you and I, you know, wherever we are, we come to church, we are there, a decision to seek the well-being of somebody. That's agape love. That means we, self, uh, sacri- uh, we are self-sacrificial. Love is a decision. Love is an action. And I can't tell my wife, I love you, I love you, I love you, and don't do anything. That's not love. That's don't know what. Right? You know, I, I, you know, yes, you know, there must be an action to back that decision. Amen. That means, right, now, as you look at 1 Corinthians 13, it's all, you know, action words. And that action is not just love, it's not just an action. Love is also, right, you know, there is this whole area of uh, nonverbal uh, expression. And what about the touch, la? You know, who's the master communicator? Come on, talk to me. La. Jesus is the master communicator. La. Come on, you look, at the, if you look at the Gospels, you can learn all the principles that you need how to communicate. La. When Jesus went to see the, when Jesus went to see the leper, la, what did Jesus do? La? In Mark chapter 1, what did Jesus do when he, saw, when he went and saw the leper? La? The Bible says he was moved with compassion. You know, and how we need to have the compassion of Jesus upon us. La. And then the Bible says, right, you know, he was just not moved by his compassion. He stretched out his hand and touched him. La. Expression, nonverbal communication expressed la. for the leper. Wow, someone is touching me. La. Nobody touches the leper. La. And Jesus expresses. And then Jesus opens his mouth, verbal communication. And he speaks, right, you know, I'm willing to be healed. La. And there, right, you know, verbal, verbal communication. And then as a result of that, you know, what does Jesus do? These guys need some med. La. I will be healed and the guy's needs are met. So friends, you know, you look at that. Come on, church, we need to have the same thing. Today I was downstairs. Uh, you know, as, as I come, sometimes I see this, uh, uh, one, one of the cleaners down there, you know, on the road. I looked at her and then, you know, just bless them. Like, you know, I just talked to her. And I said, why well, you working on high Raya? Like. I said, no leave. Like. <laughs> How can they, a Malay Muslim lady, no leave on Hari Raya? I said, no. And then I, you know, I just blessed her with something. She said, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And, you know, and, you know we are here to sow wherever we can. Amen. And this lady will know that there are Christians that love her and care for her. Why you and I, right, cannot do church and you and I cannot do life and ignore all the people on the fringes. Why? Because there are people on the fringes that are looking for a touch of love. There are people in your place of work, right? there. They're looking for a touch of love. There are people, you know, out there, you know, in the shops that you go to, you know, sometimes we choose a quiet shop to go to. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to meet people, you've got to go to a busy shop. And so, right, there are people out there. And, you know, and every person that you meet, come on, is a strategic, God-given connection. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Are you all enjoying this? Okay, good. Are you all enjoying 50% enjoying. Okay, come on. Amen. Thank you, God, bro. Thank you, uh, most reverend uh, Dr. Raj. Very good. Now, everybody's going to tell me, you're doing a good job. Like. You know, once in the, once the message in the Holiday Villa, I said, I like Milo. Like, wow. <laughs> I got a whole lecture on why I shouldn't drink certain stuff. Like. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay, no. okay. And so, church, you know, put on love. Like. Put on love. That means, right, our nonverbal. Put on love, our words. Come on. In Proverbs 18, verse 21, the Bible says, That and life are in the power of the tongue. Our words are containers that carries the power of God. Marriages are made by words. I give you, uh, I take you to be my wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. 20 years later, right? Monkey, donkey. <laughs> right? You know, shouting at each other. You see, marriages are made for, of, uh, by words. Divorces are also made by words. La. And only yesterday I discovered this. La. As I was just preparing, divorces are made by words or divorces are made by no words. <laughs> Communication gone, broken. La. No words. La. Look at each other. La. 
You know, once I was, you know, many years ago, like my, my first pastoring, I went, like there was a visitor that came to our church and I was doing visiting, so I went, I, uh, I went and visited this newcomer. Like. I'm sitting there in the house. He's a very prominent person. Like. Sitting there in the house, you know, I'm just meeting him for the first time. Like. And he's talking so badly about his wife. Like. I almost scolded him. Like. But cannot scold, right? I got to build a relationship. Like. I said, what kind of a man is this? Right? You're meeting me for the first time and talking negative about your wife. Amen. So friends, listen, you've got to speak correctly, like, words. Like. As I always say, one day I will do, I'll preach this message. If you've got nothing good to say, okay. hello, tell me, say it to yourself. Like. If you've got nothing good to say, okay. some of us will be very quiet for the rest of our lives. Like. <laughs> okay. Huh? Don't know what to say. Like. Okay. And so, come on, you got to put on love. Like. And so, Jesus said this, that my people may be one even as we are one. Like. Amen. Do you want guaranteed, get the worship team out, do you want guaranteed blessing? Like? Okay, let me tell you this. Uh, in Psalm 133, like, what is guaranteed blessing? Like? And we're just going to close with this portion of scripture. Like. The Bible says this. Like, in Psalm 133 verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Like. You know what does the Bible say? When you and I are in oneness, like, when you and I dwell in unity, like, the Bible says it is good. Like. Why is it good? Like? Because we're obeying the Lord. Na. Because, right, you know, it is something of God's heart. Na. It didn't Jesus pray that, that they may be one even as we are one. Na. The Bible says that when you and I dwell in unity, la, that means we watch over one another. La. Come on, we need to watch over one another. La. You know, we are accountable to each other. La. Amen. You know, if you see something that I need to know, come and tell me. I, if I see something that you need to know, I will definitely tell you. La. Okay. Uh, but we need to know, la. Amen. And so the Bible says good and pleasant. Why is, you know, loving one another pleasant? Why? Because that's where we experience life. Right? That's where we experience the life of God. Amen. Why? Because that's where God begins to move. And then the Bible, right, speaks about, gives two meta, I'm not sure, English teachers, please correct me. Metaphor or metaphor? Metaphor. Okay. Two metaphors la. in Psalm 133, verse 2, la, it is like precious oil running down from the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. La. Amen. Metaphor, anointing oil. Come on, when you and I love one another, la, you know what happens? There's an anointing, a release of the anointing, there's a flow. Amen. And that's where you know you and I position ourselves for you know God's move of God. La. In verse 3, the Bible says it is like the dew of Hermon, Mount Hermon. Depending, uh, descending from the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing. It's like the dew. La. How many of you need a refreshing touch? La? Just me, la. Come on. Come on. You know, the refreshing touch comes as you and I, right? Love one another. Create an environment. La. Create an environment in this place, right? When people come on Sunday morning to church, they will think, wow, this church, everybody's a pastor here. La. They put on pastor's head, you know, you're here to, and you know, create an environment. La. You know, come just to see how to serve. Come, you know, praying. Come bringing someone. Come, you know, expecting them. And then the Bible says this in verse chapter 3 verse. It ends up by saying, for there. What did God do? Le? God commanded. Who commanded a blessing? Le? Now I asked you a question earlier, right? Do you want a guaranteed blessing? Le? Right, you want a guaranteed blessing, right? What do you do? Le? Just dwell in unity. Le problem walk in unity love out each other amen the bible says god commanded the blessing what kind of blessing do you want amen protection god commanded the blessing what kind of blessing pastor you do not know my kids are giving me a problem amen god will command the blessing amen you just do what god wants you to do and god will do what he needs to do amen when you know when the book of acts when they did what god wanted them to do it was god that brought signs and wonders it was god that you know began to speak to them it was god that added to the church daily those who were being saved acts 247 god commanded blessing you want come blessing come on church the power of together come on stand up with me we're going to sing